Hi, today we're talking about a programme called The Doomsday Mill. Uh, it was filmed back in July 2006, Series 14, Episode 9, and we are joined by Naomi Supol, who was on that excavation. Naomi, hello. Hi, Danny, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, yeah. What, what's your lasting memory of this excavation then? Well, um, the overriding memory was that it was in the height of summer and it was really, really hot. That was my... Uh, my lasting memory of that site. It was in a beautiful location. It was in Devon. I'd never been to Devon before, so that was nice. And yeah, it was it was an interesting one because I think there have been some local people interested in this site and finding the mill, which I think had only been demolished in like the 1960s or so. So it was interesting to see how much we could we could find. Was there going to be much? You know, it was a recent demolition of the place, so I think it was a bit unknown. We were either going to find lots or nothing. So, yeah. I think this one's quite interesting, isn't it? Because they're looking for a mill. As you say, it had been relatively recently demolished. Um, and this, mm. you get lots of the uh, local people are turning up with documents, uh, photographs and things. And they're talking about their memories as well. I think there's one lady there whose great, great grandfather was the miller. Um, there's someone else who's there who um, recalls the miller always being covered in flour. <laughs> um, and so it's always yeah. nice to have that kind of side to it, isn't it, actually, when you've got the community involved? Yeah, because I think we'd, we'd done a day of excavation and then obviously word had got around that we were there and everything. And yeah, just one day a load of people came walking down a footpath and we, we managed to get a lot of nice um, sort of testimony from them. They were sort of saying, oh, I was a kid and I remember this. And like you say, with the miller... Uh, and didn't he go up onto the hillside and play his, his corner, his musical instrument, and so the whole valley could hear his music and all those kinds of things. So that was beautiful because not only did we have excavation, um, we had documents and tithe maps, and then that was just the icing on the cake. So you got a little bit of information across the board. Yeah, it was fantastic, wasn't it? And you've also got in this episode Therese, who's um, looking at the earlier documents. She's looking at the Doomsday because it's the Dot and Mill is mentioned in the Doomsday book. Um, and she's talking about the sort mm. of uh, early version of the mill as well. So, And I love the idea that um, there's always been a mill there for po probably a thousand years. Um, and I just think that's really fantastic. Yeah. I think, I think it was I think it was Mick that sort of said it like we knew um sort of around the time that the mill was there but like you say with the documents going back hundreds and hundreds of years um even though the physical evidence didn't necessarily to see that continuity in the landscape uh, the landscape being used and utilized again and again and again and that that was quite nice really nice actually You've also got Stuart out there reading the landscape and he's looking at the lie of the land where, where the water flows. He's looking at where the, the, the mill leet would have been. Um, and I just think that that's really fascinating as well. So you've got the documents, you've got the memories, the stories from the community. You've got Stuart reading the landscape and then you've actually got the excavation going on as well. And you were involved in that bit. Um, yeah, so there was sort of several areas of excavation we were trying to find the leaks we were trying to find um the actual water wheel and i was in um uh, i guess the more sort of a domestic setting um a house well, what we thought could have been a, a house in the accommodation where the miller uh, could have lived and we had some very clear walls very clear structures and then in one part of the trench we had some beautiful floor tiles that were still in situ um so once they've been cleaned up and recorded we lifted the tiles to see if there was anything underneath. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't, but, you know, we had to lift them to, to check it out sort of thing. And once you come towards the end of the programme, there's a really fantastic bit where they do a reconstruction of the mill. And actually, the bit that you were excavating, the kitchen, the floor tiles, are actually in that reconstruction, so it's really nice to see that. It was nice. And for a domestic sort of building, like a kitchen area, actually, there were very little finds you know a lot of the time on roman and iron age sites we're looking for evidence of food or cooking vessels and i think because the building had been recently demolished i don't know whether that meant that we had less finds or less likely to find something um because yeah the number of finds wasn't actually um that massive but thinking about stuart and his sort of landscape it was it's quite actually landscape um heavy in a way, this this episode, 
um, where you, they were using sort of low tech um, methods by looking at the parch marks, the heights of the grass, uh, tying that up with the maps, then the geophysics, um, and, it, and it did all tie together quite nicely. So it just showed that there was a lot of things that we could target to really confirm what we had. And I'm um, also just thinking in terms of um, in terms of the actual finds. Um, they have um, find specialist John Allen on, uh, and he's fantastic. He's he's kind of popped up on Time Team many a time, actually, hasn't he? Right from the from the beginning, yeah. actually. Um, and I, yeah, yeah. my favourite bit is where he, he holds up a bit of glass and um, Mick says like, oh, well, that's just a bit of glass in it. And he goes, no, hang on a minute. And he looks closely at it and he says, this is um, proper glass dating, window glass dating to the 17th century from a, a diamond shaped pane. And you go, wow, that's amazing. Mm. <laughs> so a bit, a bit of the original. Milk it is there. amazing. I can tell that just from that tiny piece of glass. Yeah. Fantastic. Isn't because it? in archaeology, when we're looking at buildings, obviously we're looking at floors and lower structures. So to guess a little piece of evidence like that, that is from a window, which is would have been higher up. It's something that we can't imagine at what height it was. Um, yeah, that was nice, a nice touch. One of your lasting memories is that it was really, really hot weather, wasn't it? Um, what other memories have you got really? of the excavation? I, I know there was some like, nice sort of local volunteers there that were there to help. Um, and that's always good. That was one of the good things about Time Team. We always tried to use local uh, people where possible because they're experts in their area of the country, if you like. So that was really nice. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, really. It was just hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember... Um, um, I remember uh, when they're filming the uh, reconstruction bit that is shown at the end, um, they were filming um, mm. Mike and Tony in front of this really um, big green screen. And they were stood in front of it um, being filmed, pretending uh, they were in the mill. I, I remember that quite vividly, actually, being stood in front of this mm -hmm. green screen in the middle of a field. <laughs> yeah, me too as well. And... Um... And, and watching that being filmed, because obviously when they do these these end of day things, we you know a lot of the excavation people we just stood back and watched this being filmed. And I remember thinking at the time, I wonder what this is going to look like. And it came out so well, really, really well. I think it was it was nice to have something like that because not always, even though we're pointing and saying, oh, we have this trench, we have this floor, we can see these divisions. It's not until you can put it into a three D kind of um, reconstruction that like you really get a grasp of what we can see and what we're imagining. Just sort of going back to we were just talking about the mill leet. Um, actually, mm -hmm. there's a really interesting bit that's actually comes out more in the report, and people can download this um, the report that was produced mm -hmm. after the excavation. Um, and that is that actually the mill leet is part of or is the parish boundary between the two parishes. And I think that's something really right. fascinating yeah. because you, it's one of those where you go, wow, if it is actually part of the parish boundary, it must be really, really old. It has to be really old. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a mm -hmm. great bit where Mick's saying, yeah, well, it's probably at least a thousand years old, going back to the Doomsday mm -hmm. Book 1086, but actually probably even earlier than that, actually. Mm -hmm. And he gives a great yeah. explanation um, that, in fact, actually, there's a great little masterclass um, that people can watch on YouTube, um, which is Mick talking about um, the origin of boundaries. And we can put a link up um, below for people to follow if they like. Oh, I, I tell you, there was, you know, you say what is really memorable. And I can't believe I didn't say this before. So obviously, Phil was concentrating on looking for the wheel and the wheel pit. And I'd started off working with him. But then the hole just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And we were having to shore the sides to a point. It was like, right, Naomi, you can't help fill anymore because you'll never get out. I'm four foot nine and three quarters. And so in the program, you can see an aerial shot of me just stood on the corner going, yep, yeah, this is impossible for me. If I go in, I'm never coming back out. <laughs> um, and But it really gave you a, a great sense of scale as to how big this wheel would have been. And, the you know, the, the, the pit that was created, how deep it had to be. Uh, and not always in archaeological sites do you dig that deep, but we, in this case we did because it was a, a, a big structure that we were looking for. So it was mm. very impressive and very obvious to look at. 
yeah that must have been you know you imagine actually trying to actually dig that out in the first place actually because you know no no mechanical diggers then um yeah, it's quite a feat, isn't it, really? Well, the whole thing is an amazing feat. Uh, you know, a mill in itself is an amazing bit of engineering, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and the fact that there was so much effort put into these buildings in order to grind corn into flour to make that daily bread in a, in a much quicker, more efficient way, because there's a little segment where they leave Matt with a quernstone and he's at it for hours and hours. Yeah. Um, and because flour it was your, your basic stuff of life you know eating wise back then so to have this technology to make make making that daily bread easier is um it's a big turning point a big turning point absolutely I mean it saved so much time didn't it I think um so it took Matt I think it was two hours in the end to sort of grind a, mm -hmm. a, a smallish bag and there's a bit where they actually yeah. visit working uh, mill um uh, where Tony goes to have a look at it and um, it would take about 15 minutes to fill a sack. So you compare that, yeah. you know, and it frees up frees up a lot of time, doesn't it, for you? It does. Um, and I, 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 we did get to visit that mill and I did buy some flour to take home and it made beautiful bread. Oh, really brilliant. Did. We should say we're talking about Otterton Mill in Devon, aren't we? Um, so, yeah, a good working mill that people can actually um, still visit today. And by the way, the water from the River Otter makes delicious uh, beer that they uh, sell down there as well, which I'm sure we all <laughs> sample a bit of. That's very true. Yeah, Otter Brewery. <laughs> <laughs> we went to one or two pubs and yeah, there was some good, because I, I, I do like real ale and there was some good beers. We also went and had uh, a traditional Devon cream tea and that was my first experience as well. So it was, it was a nice little uh, few days down there for me, definitely. What would you say the highlight of the episode is and um, why should people watch this in particular? Um, so, yeah, for me, it, it was a nice episode in being able to incorporate all of that landscape and documentary evidence. It wasn't just about the excavation. With some of the nice aerial shots that we had, it was very clear as well. Um, so, yeah, for me, because I do love my environmental and landscape archaeology, which do go hand in hand. Um, that was it was a nice one for me it was just something a little bit different fantastic brilliant really nice catching up with you Naomi and um, look forward to seeing you again soon very very soon now <laughs> <laughs> cheers then right, take care Danny bye I'm at the very start of a fugu and it might be that there's more of these tunnels and caverns existing on this site. We're going to be here in September so please join us then and back us on Patreon so we can do more and more work on these wonderful sites.